Alrighty, here we are back again. Um, I'm almost in the screen. Oh well, there's only so much you can do about that. I did take a still shot of my camera setup. It's uh, it's on a shelf right here. Right here, it's a metal shelf. <clears throat> and Randy had it duct taped. It's on an, on an inexpensive tripod. And he had it duct taped to the shelf. And this morning I heard a crash came in here and my baby movie camera was had hit its head. It was in the floor. So I came along, moved it just a little bit, fine-tuned it a bit. And um, we're getting a little bit of a shadow, but... Aha! There's part of it. Anyway, the book is dry. Whoops. Still got stuff falling over. This is this is a gerrymandered brush here. This is a uh, don't you love the way I jump around? This is an inexpensive low Cornell soft comfort brush, and they sell them at Joann's Fabrics, but they're short. They're intended for craft use and watercolor use, but for certain oil techniques I do, I like a real soft brush. So I just uh, put a drinking straw on the end of it and taped it. Now I can hold it back here a little more and go to town anyway. This one was not doing that well for oil. They don't last very long. So I usually buy them three or four at a time. But it's still got a lot of life left in it for other things. See? I am really going to like this video camera right up here where I can see with it. Anyway, I've got my apron on first today. Aren't you glad? Uh, won't, you won't have to be subjected to any more of my cursing. Well, <laughs> maybe not. You never know. Okay, I digress. Put that up here. Um, the book cover turned out fine. It's, um, it's dry. And I'm confident that the Tyvek is going to do its job in reinforcing. This paper has a thin plastic coat, so I think this is going to be impervious to a lot of things. I have decided to cover it with duck cloth, and of course then that brings into play uh, my little tabs, but that's no big deal. I can always cut a hole for those if they stay. So this is a duck cloth I learned about from Tracy Batista. I love her classes. If you ever get a chance to take one online, do it. Um, so anyway, this is where I'm headed. And again, I'm doing it because um, sturdiness, I think, might be better than paper. Um, I may... Oh, I can't even tell you about that. I'm, I'm a guest, doing a guest blog post for a company, and I've got a project over there that I may end up using on the cover, and that'll show it as a project. But anyway, what I'm going to do is paint the fabric first, and I've cut it generously on all sides, and I'm going to paint and decorate it, and then I'll be able to find, I'll be able to move this around a wee bit to pick the best spot of what I've painted. <clears throat> so, while I collect my thoughts and decide what patterns I'm going to use on the cover or on the outside, um, I'll turn it back on and show you what I've picked. I'm back. I, um, I spent about six months last year just shopping and making and trying to get textures and tools to use and I have succeeded but as you all know I've talked about before I'm uh, it's hard to get all this organized so you can find it when you need it so one of the things I've learned from you guys in the last few months I think so correct me if I'm wrong um, Pick the stuff out that you're going to use before you start. And that way, you can just grab it and go. Um, you've got your paint colors out. You've got your uh, stencils and your texture patterns. And I think more importantly, or as importantly, no, I think it's more important. If you pick out your color selection before you start 
it doesn't matter how many textures you use as long as they stay in the limited color palette you've chosen. And because this is a book that's my little boy, um, and because this is a book for hopefully uh, someone else to take and journal and fill up, I want any marks I make to be in the background or unobtrusive. Now that doesn't mean that I may not do, in fact I know I will, um, I've got the idea already for a few pages I'll complete, um, but for the most part I'm just going to decorate the other pages very subtly and staying with my main color which is pink and some gold and silver. Anyway, I picked out some stencil tools. Um, since I used the um, polka dot the polka dot embossing yesterday I pulled out everything that has dots and this is that little roller ball I got back in the summer sometime from Walmart and I had another one so I went ahead and pulled it out because it's kind of zigzaggy and a chevron pattern um, the other thing that I have is the chevron pattern roller stamp, so I want to use that. Still got the tag on it, so you can see I haven't used it. And of course my little roses from yesterday, so I pulled out a few um, rose, eh, sorry, a few rose things, stencils and stuff. And I found this today. This is from my, gosh, this is listen to me this is something from my Japanese mother-in-law's stash this is gossamer I can't imagine who this is the first time I've looked at it it looks like a real thin it looks like stitch witchery the stuff you iron fabric together with the fiber is just translucent and it's got orchids oh my it's paper did you want to make sure it wasn't oh wow no you can't save it she saved it for 50 years and you are going to use one on this project especially so there's that let's put that up here um, someone gave me a stamp stash when they left and I would probably never in my wildest dreams use a bunny rabbit and a bear with a heart. But this might be the one occasion. I pulled some little hearts. Now remember, if I stick to my pink, cream, gold, silver theme, I can use those. And this one's a little bit um, old-fashioned, but I like it because it's it's got that rose floral shape which goes with some of my fabrics and papers so there's that one um, you remember the fun foam that I freeform stitched and again this is Tracy Batista um, these make an interesting mark and it's very unobtrusive so that's going to be used I pulled out this one this was with raffia and string stuck to a sticky um, peel and stick fun foam and again, this is just for just for some texture interest. I found this at Walmart the other day. It was um, two dollars, and it was a roll, but it's got a nice open weave, and that will be great for some texture. Um, this is a stencil girl stencil, and let me put it on this. You can see it. Is that better? It's um, kind of rough. Um, circles which goes with my little circle theme I, and I forgot yesterday when I was um, getting my gesso out there were clumps it looked like it was really gross it looked like white blood clots so instead of throwing that away I grabbed a piece of plastic that's got some printables in it and I just smooshed that gesso on there I'm not, I'm not kidding, it was just gross. And then I sprayed it with some spray inks. And it may not be flexible enough to tear off, but you know what? I tried, and um, it may just crumble. But then again, it may not. So, 
Again, I've got some pinky colors. That might find some use. Okay, so we talked about that one. Um, I don't very often buy expensive, well, unless it's marked down, but I love a crackle pattern. And again, that's a good background. Doesn't say a whole lot. Um, this is a Tracy Bautista stencil from Stencil Girl. And again, it's got my circles. This is a shape that I cut out with my um, Cricut Explorer. And just it's just made out of a lightweight cardstock. But as you put acrylic paint on these paper things, they become sturdy just about like plastic. And again, it's kind of got some little girly shapes that might be hearts. There's a little piece that's torn, but that's fixable. Here's a glue gun stencil that I made. Um, again, we've got a little heart going on there and just some lines and swirls. This was made with the scraps from one of my stamp cutting. Um, and that'll be good to get some little unusual texture. And this is something else I um, I cut with my Cricut. It's, um, it looks like text, but you can't really read it. But it does look like old-fashioned text, so that'll be nice. Here is a piece of Punchinella. And this was in a box that Taco had. And everyone else that had gone through it, Randy's sister and... You know, who who knows who else left it for trash. I haven't been able to find Punchinella anywhere. So this little scrap is going to get used. That's all I have. But you know what? It won't tear up. Um, here's a silk screen I made. Um, and that's fun. I need to do some more of those. Um, but they give you a little bit of a different um, print when you when you put acrylic paint through them. And Margaret Applin is the one that got me started on this. She's um, really a little more into the fiber arts, but there's such a crossover. So that'll be kind of fun with my some of my florals. Here's another circle. Um, not real sure where I got this. I think maybe I cut it on the Cricut, but it is so such a thin plastic. Oh, well, it may last as good as the paper ones. Who knows? Um, some butterflies and butterflies. So that might be cute. Maybe some modeling paste or something like that. Some more hearts. And dragonflies are my personal totem. So I always try to include a few dragonflies and things. This is a cute little, reminds me of a French toile pattern. That'll be nice. Look, <laughs> you can tell how much I've used it. I Thing. Now I bought this and then cut around it because I didn't want I didn't want square edges on it. And the other day when I was in Walmart, I found um, nope. This may have been anyway. This is chevron patterns, which will go with this. And I've got several things, so that'll help carry that theme throughout. Here's another little um, peel and stick painting stencil. I've there's a company doing these now, but this one is by Plaid, and I've seen some interesting demonstrations using these on jelly plates, but anyway, it's the chevron pattern, but it's different. I've got a couple of alphabet stencils. I found these at Walmart. They're on uh, real good, heavy quality stencil plastic, and just a different style, and these were real inexpensive, so what the hell. All right, I'm going to come back in a minute with some colors. Bye. Well, it's amazing what you can find when you dig around in all the little drawers and boxes and stuff. Um, quick. Fabric markers. Um, I can't wait to get my Sylvia Tabor toilet paper roll organizer because I don't want to get these mixed up with my regular markers and those were Crayola by the way these are Marvy and there's only the white one and maybe the red one might work I don't know I'll have to play with those but they too are just fabric markers I've got 
some neon pink slick paint. Um, I pulled out a couple of glimmer mist. This one may be too purple. This one may be too coral. And there's a pretty good pink, so I'll sample those before I use them. Um, here's a white chalkboard paint, metallic craft paint. Um, this is a smooch spritz spray, if I can get it to spray, because they're notorious for not spraying. And a permanent paint stick by Crink, never used it. I've got uh, fabric glitter spray, I've got iridescent gold 3D paint, I've got some pink fabric paint. And I'm keeping out my three that I used to tint my gesso. You never know when you may want those back. I would love to be able to use this. It's a Inca Gold Rub and it's in a reddish. It's tending toward the pink so that might work. I've got a gold metallic pen. I've got another tube of neon acrylic. I'll be careful with the neons though. I've got a fired brick distress ink pad which may be too dark. I've got a color box. There's a red one. Okay. Okay. I found a heart, a heart stamp while I was going through things. You're not going to believe all the pink I found. Remember the fingernail polish transfers? A lot of pinks in there. That one not so much. I found used pink saran wrap. Cool. I found some other pieces of saran wrap that were used in watercolor. Those may be too orange. We'll see. I found a scrap of a marbled paper in kind of pinkish color. Just some scraps here. Here's a handmade paper in pink. I found that. I found a little piece of white gossamer whatever with silk and gold. Just little patterns in that. And this is something that looks like building insulation. I have no clue what it is, and I really have no clue where I got it. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I pulled that one out. It can go back. Here's a piece of white handmade paper. I found these little dimensional bronze colored leaves. They look like leaves that have been dried found another chevron pattern. This is from my encaustic stash. This is silicone potholder, but it makes great marks. See? Can you see? Tell me you can see. Okay. A piece of old dressmaking pattern. May or may not get used because it's kind of the wrong color. Um, this is left over from watercolor days. It's a plastic placemat, and it makes a great stencil. So that adds to the pattern. And I made a liar out of me. This is another Japanese napkin, but guess what? It came from Pier 1. It may have been something that I bought her and gave her for Mother's Day. Who knows? But anyway, it is from Japan. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. What else have I got? Oh, I've got um, these little Chinese chop figures. One is for love and the other is for friends. I thought that might, might come in handy. Okay, that's it for now. Bye. Alright, here we go. Uh, I've got some Golden Titan Buff. First thing I'm going to do, which doesn't show up at all, which is fine. You know what else I'm going to do? I just thought of something that would work a whole lot better. I don't need the gesso so I can slide it out of the way. I don't need the candy that came in the... Voila! This, my young friends, is a pee pad. 
course, you may know that from kids' use. I inherited a box of these from the in-laws. So I'm going to put this under my fabric. Move the washi tape. Yeah, I think if I had a work surface that was eight feet, it wouldn't do me any good. I'd have, I wouldn't be able to use it. Okay, now let's use some pink. I'm being real cautious but you guys if you know me very well you'll know that that won't last very long well, that just made some serious bobs didn't it it's all right it's okay put that up and I'm going to turn this off. Um, no, I'm not going to turn it off. I can't turn it off. I'm going to shut up because I like my music going. And Google will tag it as uh, Sting or something like that. So I've got to cut that out. Anyway, I'm going to shut up and here we go.
Well, as you can see, I had some issues, and I think it boils down to working on the fabric. I got some pretty good textures, but um, that's really all it is at this point is a big old background. I'm not happy. But that also doesn't mean it's finished. And anything that I don't like, guess what? I can cover up. So anyway, this is the plan. It's got some interesting texture. I think as the fabric soaks up, some of the acrylic. I might get some better imprints, but I just had trouble getting getting anything to make a mark. But live and learn. Um, I'm gonna try one more thing before I shut it down for tonight. And I'm gonna try a little bit of modeling paste. And this is um, modeling cream and it's iridescent. And I don't really feel like getting kink in that, so. I know this will show because it's going to be dimensional. And I'm getting tired of looking for tools and palette knives and Lord knows I've got them in here. Come on. Aha. Now that is a good mark. I swear it's the paper. Shit. Excuse me. It's the fabric. Maybe Tracy Batista cutted hers first with matte medium or gel medium. It wouldn't surprise me a bit. See, I'm not going to worry about it too much because the Everything can be covered and I can just keep going. I'm not going to get mud because I'm basically just staying with the same colors. But that got boring too, as you could see in the That's when the bronze started coming out. And that's it. I'm going to clean this off. So I'll see you later. Look how nice that looks. Mm -hmm.